Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Welcome back to another exciting episode of our Thriving Muslimah series brought to you by Ikna Sisters. In the world we live in right now, it seems really hard to not fall into despair. It would be easy to lose all hope and succumb to disbelief. But you don't. You pick yourself up and brush the dust off and you keep trying. And you ask yourself this question. If Allah sees everything that I do, then what does he think of me? Your answer to this question influences your attachment style to Allah, basically your relationship with Allah, and then by that extension, your own self-worth. A good or bad relationship with Allah ultimately affects how we view ourselves and how we can be productive members of society. And having a healthy and well-proportioned understanding of who Allah is, is based on our fitrah and supported by evidences from the Quran and Sunnah, and that will become essential to our thriving. Our deen educates us on the meaning and purpose of life, and we can be fulfilled in every way when we attach ourselves to Allah. We have been created in a way to desire to attach to something or someone, something or someone who will not fail us or let us down, and who will always be there for us, as long as we understand and allow that to happen. Who else could that be besides Allah? Having a false perception of Allah and having low expectations of Him will do just the opposite of thriving. This will lead to a religious, physical, emotional, and mental decline. Your relationship with Allah directly impacts your overall well-being. The Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I am as my servant expects of me. So this is an invitation to think of Allah in positive tones and this will lead to positivity in our lives. And there are so many dimensions to well-being such as the physical, emotional, social, religious, intellectual, mental, just to name a few. And none of these areas can afford to be neglected. And as long as we realize that all these dimensions are interconnected to the center, which is Allah, then it will get easier to grow into that ideal Muslim woman that we inspire to be. Connect each area back to Allah so that your relationship is further cemented and you start to feel better about yourself. For example, to nurture your physical well-being, anytime you get a chance to do a little outdoor walking, even if it's only for 10 minutes, be marveled at all the creations of Allah that we take for granted. For your emotional well-being, discover one personal stress reliever to reduce stress, such as seeking professional help or praying to Allah in a way that soothes your mind. In many places in the Quran, Allah informs the reader about the fate of those who are unjust. On an intellectual level, keep yourself informed about what's going on in the news and ask yourself if this is injustice or not. Religiously strive to learn more about what makes you a believer. Don't wait for an opportunity to come knocking your door. Find out what makes you an inheritor of heaven and go for it. A positive mindset is the anchor for your development and to have a better connection with Allah. Without it, all your endeavors can come crashing down. Even with physical impediments and disabilities, a healthful, healthy mental perspective will allow you to see the positivity of Allah's way. That, in turn, will become the determinant to your best life in this world and the next. Acknowledge the reality and importance of well-being and connect that back to our creator, sustainer, and provider. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 155, And we will surely test you with something of fear and hunger and loss of wealth and lives and fruits, but give good tidings to the patient. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it very clear to us that our life on earth is full of tests. Every single one of us will be tested in one way or another. For example, Prophet Yaqub alayhi salam, was so grieved at the loss of his son, Prophet Yusuf, that he cried to the point of blindness. Prophet Musa السلام, experienced fear like no other throughout the different stages of his life. Even the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, experienced so much sadness and grief at the shocking reactions of the very people who used to call him Al-Amin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what he created, and he knows our weaknesses and limitations even before we do. But all the prophets of Allah overcame these adversities because of their strong bond with Allah. They never wavered even for a moment and that supported their overall well-being and gave them and those who follow them the ultimate success. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah number 94 verses 5 and 6, For indeed with every hardship there is relief. Indeed with every hardship there is relief. You have the strength and the ability to cope with every task and problem you face in life. You can pull through only if you trust in Allah. 
And this is the ideal reality that we thrive for. There is a saying of the Prophet ﷺ recorded in Musnad Ahmad where he said, You will not be given anything after the word of sincere faith like wellness, so ask Allah for wellness. Ask from the one who can give it. Stay tuned for our next episode of the Thriving Muslim Series and until we meet next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.